It's rare on this channel that I get to showcase the work of a true auteur, but today, I'm doing a movie from an Oscar-nominated British director. Now, if you think that means it's gonna be some stuffy period piece, guess again, it's actually a horror movie about snake vampires. <laughs> Fishing ones are fishing in the weir. Lair of the White Worm is a 1988 British comedy horror movie from infamous director Ken Russell, who's best known for films that skirted the line between art house and grindhouse, like The Devils, Tommy, Altered States, and Gothic. Now, for anyone who's not familiar with Ken Russell, here's a little sample of his work. Oh, and that clip I just showed? Yeah, that's from one of his classical music biopics. You starting to get the picture? The point I'm trying to make here is that Ken Russell was one demented motherfucker. So it's no surprise that Lair of the White Worm is a pretty demented movie. It's based off a story by Bram Stoker, who's better known as the author of Dracula. But if you haven't read the novel, don't worry. Ken Russell is on record saying he didn't even like the novel and basically just used the title and a few story elements from it. So make no mistake, even though the credits say it's based off Bram Stoker's story, this is very much Ken Russell's Lair of the white worm. And if you're wondering what that means, expect lots of sacrilegious imagery and phallic symbols, probably at the same time. Thankfully, I prepared plenty of dick jokes to go along with them. Considering Ken Russell's fondness for over-the-top sexual imagery, I guess it's appropriate that this movie begins with a shot of a giant hole. Later, Roger Daltrey's gonna try and fill it up. Whoa, Hugh Grant's in this movie? Oh, this promises to be a delightful British rom-com. Not only that, but the director of photography was low-hanging fruit Mick That's Too Easy. Anyway, we then cut to archaeologist Angus Flint, played by Peter Capaldi, who by the looks of it has made a pretty important discovery. Yeah! Oh, what do you know? Peter likes dinosaurs as much as I do. Angus is digging near a bed and breakfast run by the Trent sisters, who, in case you couldn't tell, are not archaeologists. If that's a primitive man, it looks like a dinosaur sat on it. <laughs> I think a dinosaur sat on your head if you think that's a caveman skull. Oh, Dad had a cow look like that once called Bessie. I reckon that's Bessie. <laughs> okay, seriously, did she get a head injury, or is this just British humor I'm not getting? And there's more than just skulls at this bed and breakfast. There's also lots Lots of foreshadowing. However, there's something weird about this particular skull. Well, that layer of flints represents 1,000 years. I deduce that your old skull dates back from Roman times because that's nearly twice as deep. Oh, so the creationists were wrong. Dinosaurs did survive being on Noah's Ark. Well, if it's not a dinosaur, what is it? Okay, if this actually was just a flattened caveman skull, that'd be pretty hilarious. Mary here invites Angus to a party happening later that night, and she even wore her best Cosby sweater for the occasion. And if you're wondering just what kind of party it is... John Dumpton went to fishing once, a fishing in the weir. That's right, it's a good old-fashioned cotton-eyed Joe Hoot Nanny. You know, I always thought Brits were kind of stuffy, but if this is what their formal gatherings are like, I owe them an apology. And whoa, 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 what the hell are you doing? Don't show the effects before they're finished. This shindig is being held at the estate of James Dampton, played by Hugh Grant, and according to legend, his ancestors slew a monster called the Dampton Worm. Huh, I wonder if there's a connection to the title. Well, you mustn't take the word worm too literally. It's an adaptation of the Anglo-Saxon virum, meaning dragon or snake. Then why the hell isn't this movie called Lair of the White Dragon? That's a way cooler title. You're really digging up my farmyard. Yeah? I'm sorry. I don't, don't give a damn. Have fun. I suppose digging in cow dung is fun, is it? You know, I love how even in a movie like this, Hugh Grant is still totally Hugh Grant. Anyway, how's the food? It's fantastic. Oh, good. So you've taken to our local speciality. Pickled earthworms in aspic is not to everyone's taste, I can tell you. Mmm, British cuisine at its finest. Well, that was a pretty good party. Now let's take a shortcut home through the moors. I'm sure nothing bad will happen. Mary also explains that her parents mysteriously disappeared near this area about a year ago. But again, I'm sure there's no connection to the title. They left the pub as usual, set off through the grove, and then, well, it's as if they were just... Swallowed up. Ooh, you mean like swallowed up by a flattened caveman? You know what this means though, Angus. She's vulnerable, which means it's time to make your move. Was there no one else to help? 
you're trying to ask me if I've got a boyfriend, the answer's no. Okay, cool. That's all I wanted to know. Unfortunately, Angus gets cock-blocked by a phantom car. My god, that scared me. It's not a car. Driving in the dark without headlights. Yeah, if by no headlights you mean the headlights were on. Even though it's been a year, the police are still looking for the Trent sisters' parents, and turns out they found her dad's watch. It was found in Stone Rig Cavern by a potholder. Was there anything else? Yeah, a few severed fingers, but uh, the prints didn't match your parents, so don't worry about it. The cop goes to investigate a mansion near where the watch was found, but first, here's a voice cameo from the director. I'm having me dinner. Fuck the cult candy fried turkey and get on your bike. I can't, me pump's broke. Well, you can take your bicycle pump and shove it up your ass. Considering that exchange, I'm a little surprised it didn't end with a fart. He also ends up getting bit by a snake, but I'm sure the lady of the house will help you out. There. Oh, uh, wait, I just realized I got bit a little higher up. Uh, you should probably suck the poison out there, too. Uh, quite the place you got here. What, is your furniture all in the clan or something? This is Lady Sylvia Marsh, played by Amanda Donahoe, who just got back after a long absence. Something's been found in Stone Rig Cavern. Joe Trent's watch. And was he on the end of the chain? Well, I'm sure she's on the up and up. Seriously though, Amanda Donahoe's performance here is one of the highlights of the movie. She's just the right combination of posh, sexy, and cold, devious bitch. Ah yes, there it is. My prized cow skull. You know, I'm beginning to think there's something weird about Lady Sylvia. Ugh. She just marked her territory all over Jesus. Well, I guess she wanted to show him who's boss. Meanwhile, James drops Eve back home, who by the looks of it is dressed for her junior prom. And come on, Eve, what are you doing? Don't touch the Venom Christ. And now that I say that out loud, Venom Christ would be a pretty awesome name for a metal band. Speaking of which, guess what happens next? <laughs> That's right, a heavy metal music video. Man, why do I get the feeling John Michael Thor's gonna show up at any moment? Oh, anger, anger is my middle name. In true Ken Russell fashion, this part also features nuns getting raped by Roman soldiers, but because this is YouTube, uh, won't be able to show much of that. Eve? Eve. You're right. Oh man, I just had a nightmare I was in a Ken Russell movie. James goes to comfort her, and if you're wondering how he does that... Now what happened up there? I saw some stuff. That's all. All I remember. Yeah, just try harder. It's by having Hugh Grant still be Hugh Grant. I remember now. After I passed out, I remember. A serpent! Don't you mean worm? Oh, well there's your explanation. She just hallucinated a medical logo. While this is going on, Lady Sylvia picks up a hitchhiking boy scout, and he's about to earn his merit badge in innuendo. How do you rate the music? I'm not really into it, banging. Are you into any sort of banging? I'm not bad on the math, old gun. Congratulations, kid. You passed. Hey, they're playing my favorite board game, Worms and Ladders. It was also nice of Lady Sylvia to lend this kid her amazing Technicolor Hugh Hefner coat. And he wasn't kidding about being good on the mouth organ, although it has a very strange effect on Sylvia. It's enough of that, Kevin. Sort of music freaks me out. Okay, I guess don't play any Bob Dylan around her then. Oh, Sylvia is a good host. She even gives the kid a bath. But your girlfriend doesn't do this for you? Nah, not me mum neither. Well, I remind you of your mother, do I? Yeah, kinda. Probably why I'm at a bit of an off chub right now. And I think Sylvia's about to make it a full one. Ooh, should have said no teeth, kid. By the looks of it, though, it was still totally worth it. You know, I'm beginning to suspect Sylvia might be evil. James better be careful. Oh, hello there. Did somebody order a charmingly befuddled military stripogram? Even though this is a weird movie about snake demons, there's still time for some witty British dialogue. To lose one parent may be regarded as a misfortune. To lose both looks like carelessness. <laughs> well, it's hardly a comedy of manners, is it? Yeah, I'd say this is more a comedy of LSD and repressed Catholic rage. And while we're at it, how about some more foreshadowing? Rosebud. 
This movie is nothing like Casablanca. I really gotta give it to Hugh Grant. He charms the ladies even when they're weird snake women. She probably only likes him for his money, though. James is so rich he can even afford his own green screen. Because one weird dream sequence wasn't enough, we get another one featuring Hugh Grant. Although there's thankfully less nun rape this time. Instead, there's just crossword puzzles. Oh, I see it now. It's a snake. This part's still a little fucked up, though. For example, no way are you gonna make Hugh Grant drink absinthe. He's a brandy man. Hey, I was just thinking... Thinking, you know what this movie could really use? Uh, I actually wasn't thinking stewardesses wrestling, but now that I see it, okay, sure. And judging by this next part, Hugh agrees with me. Okay, Hugh, come on, time to wake up and end this dream sequence. It's tea time. Before that, though, he's got to read the newest edition of the Plot Revelation Post. My God. What do you make of that? Oh, uh, hey, just figured out this movie's about a giant worm. They decide to go to the cavern and investigate, and because this is Britain and it's always raining, that means it's the perfect time to go looking for worms. Look, it is just feasible that given the right conditions, a species long considered extinct could survive. That's true. That's how they'll catch the yeti. No, 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 no. I've said this before. It is a bad idea to try and catch a yeti. Look, everybody, it's just as I suspected. Ken Russell's been in this cave. Half male, half female. Like a maphrodite. Or the common earthworm. Or even the Dampton worm. That would explain how it might survive over hundreds, thousands of years. Ah, a dragon that can go fuck itself. The perfect organism. Rather than keep looking, Eve decides to go home. And as long as we're talking about mythical creatures, hey look, it's a wood nympho. Eve, I feel so silly. Well, if you feel silly now, just wait until you're covered in blue paint later. Sylvia hypnotizes Eve and takes her back to her place and reveals she's an immortal priestess who worships the Dampton Worm, which would explain how she can self-tan and not worry about getting melanoma. Yes, I can see you now on your knees, blindly worshipping your false god. Fancy praying to a god who was nailed to a wooden cross. Hey, come on, Jesus didn't just die on the cross, he also hunted vampires. Sylvia needs Eve to be a sacrifice to the Dampton Worm, and I don't know what she's planning on doing with that, and uh, actually it's a Ken Russell movie, so yeah, I do. <gasps> yep, that was right. Sylvia gets Eve to call Mary and tell her she's going away for a while so they're not suspicious, but luckily she snaps out of it with the power of Jesus. Come on, Dionin! <laughs> this movie is so predictable. What was all that about? No. Yeah, you're not alone, lady. It's obvious something's wrong, but there's still time for a little dry British humor. Dionan was a pagan snake god. Well, why didn't you say so before? You've only just mentioned it yourself, man. Well, I only just remembered it. Well, they seem to have come down with the most charming bit of amnesia. It seems to me that there's some kind of conflict going on here. And if Angus is right, then it's a conflict between Christianity and some... Early pagan cult. Well, more like a conflict between Christianity and a batshit crazy director, but you're on the right track. They figure out that Lady Sylvia Marsh is involved somehow, which means James is gonna need some snake charming music. My father had something that sounded suspiciously like the music of a snake charmer. But all I can find is this solitary disc labeled Turkish Charmer. Nah, don't use that. It's just gonna be a low-budget ripoff of a popular American charmer. And don't go turning on the snake charming music just yet, fellas. Amanda Donahoe's still got a pose for the movie's poster. All right, let's see what music he picked. My god, it's working. Okay, time to find Eve and maybe steal some valuables before she gets back. No sign of Eve, but they do find somebody apparently watching another Ken Russell movie. Uh, Mrs. Bates? <laughs> Oh, okay, I guess it's her mom. Good news, your mom's not dead. Bad news, she's not exactly alive either. And because Mary got another snake bite, you know what that means. More green screen shenanigans. <laughs> No! <laughs> no! 
It's almost like Ken Russell had some leftover hallucinations from altered states and was like, no, 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 don't worry, I can use these somewhere. Angus manages to suck out the poison, but Mary's snake mom goes over to James's place. And this leads to what is arguably the greatest moment in the entire movie. Ladies and gentlemen, feast your eyes on this. <laughs> Ever wondered what it'd be like if Hugh Grant was in an Evil Dead movie? Well? And if you don't believe me, watch this. Hey! I'll swallow your soul! I'll swallow your soul! I'll swallow your soul! <laughs> Hello, Angus, it's James. Yes, I believe I've just slain Mary's undead snake mother. What's that? No, 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 I did not call her a she-bitch before I did so. Terribly sorry, missed opportunity on my part. Meanwhile, Angus tends to Mary's bite. Okay, if anybody asks, you just got a really bad hickey. The policeman also comes by and asks Mary to help with identifying her mother's body. But wait a second, didn't he get bitten earlier too? Psych! Oh shit, he's a snake vampire and his eyes are still googly as shit. What the hell is Mary gonna do? Ah yes, bagpipes. A musical instrument so obnoxious, even a snake vampire will do anything to get him to stop. Ever wanted to see Peter Capaldi in a kilt getting chased by a vampire snake policeman? Well, here's your movie, I guess. And more good news, Peter Capaldi gets to have a Sam Raimi movie moment too, both in terms of gore and humor. I think your bagpipes just farted there, Angus. Boy, Angus really came prepared. He brought anti-venom and a mongoose. And seriously, if this movie ended with the Dampton Worm fighting a giant mongoose, that would be pretty awesome. Unfortunately for Angus, Lady Sylvia's back and she just blew herself. <laughs> eh. I still would. One caveat though, I'd prefer it if you shaved those pits. Sylvia needs a sacrifice to give to the Dampton Worm and wants to use Eve because she's apparently a virgin, even though she's like 28 or something. And if you're wondering, yes, Amanda Donahoe spends the rest of her screen time covered in blue paint and topless, so this part ought to be a lot of fun to edit. Alright, they've built it up for the entire movie, so now it's time to finally see the Dampton Worm. <laughs> Not since Mario 64 has there been an eel this terrifying. Between the worm and the weird colors, why do I get the feeling this hole leads to Beetlejuice's dimension? Angus comes in to rescue Eve, and while a lot of people would make fun of the worm effects here, compared to a lot of the monsters I've seen on this show, this doesn't look that bad. This is for getting blood on my kilt, you blue bitch! <laughs> And because this movie's British, that means there's only one way to deal with an ancient worm god, and that's with a holy hand grenade. <laughs> Alright, good job, Angus. You killed the worm, rescued the girls, and came up with a cure for the snake curse. Oh, and I guess James helped too? Something about leading an expedition to smoke out the worm or something? You smoked out the worm and saved our skin, as that should do you. Okay, I thought the worm was coming because Sylvia was offering Eve as a sacrifice to it, but sure, James totally helped too, I guess. Wait a second, this ending seems a little too neat and tidy for a horror movie. It's Darby Hospital Research Lab here. Yes, you were given the wrong serum. It's for the relief of arthritis. <laughs> Eh, don't worry about it, Peter. You may be infected with the vampire snake curse, but you're still gonna be Doctor Who later. Only one thing to do now, end on a sequel bait twist. Look, I don't know about you, but I'm famished. Should we stop on the way for a bite? Why not? Heh. <laughs> Even when he's about to get killed, Hugh Grant's face is still set on charming befuddlement. So that's Lair of the White Worm, which is kinda like if Ken Russell made a Hammer movie. While not his best work, Lair of the White Worm is actually a decent introduction to Ken Russell's filmography, especially for horror fans, because believe it or not, as weird as it is, it's actually kinda subdued by Ken's usual standards. Yeah, sure, there's lots of weird snake hallucinations, but it still doesn't have Roger Daltrey writing a 10-foot penis and Frankenstein Hitler with a machine gun guitar. Still, it does have plenty of Ken Russell's twisted humor and fondness for weird imagery, not to mention a great performance by Amanda Donahoe as the villain.
Allen. And it is interesting to see Hugh Grant and Peter Capaldi so early in their careers. I mean, how many movies like this has Hugh Grant ever made? On the downside, there are a fair amount of talky scenes that slow the pacing, and I would have preferred if there were more of the over-the-top British Evil Dead moments the movie occasionally shows, but there's still enough here to keep gonzo cinema fans entertained. It goes without saying, though, that just like with Ken Russell's other movies, this is definitely an acquired taste. But, like I mentioned earlier, where else are you gonna see Hugh Grant slice an undead snake lady in half with a broadsword? Not in love, actually, that's for sure. Well, it's all for now. Until next time. Well, I've heard of penis entry, but that's ridiculous.